Okay, hopefully um, this has gone live. This seems to be a endless sort of complication. I'm doing a different way of doing it. It looks really grainy and fuzzy to me, but we are there. And I can't tell if anybody else is there. Well, it looks like that probably means they aren't. So that's fine. Um, but we thought we'd, I said I'd give it a go. And uh, last week I wasn't feeling great. Uh, had a lot of had some dental problems recently, but uh, that's all kind of fixed up. Well, nearly all fixed up, but not quite finished. But uh, God bless the NHS. We're almost there. Um, so I think this is okay. I think it's working. But if there's nobody there to tell me that they can hear me, then uh, it's a bit of a bit of a poor do. So let's just assume the R. Um, if not, that's fine. We'll work it out later. I am wearing the hat as requested. So I'm trying to keep up the um, schedule of producing things that I think people will uh, like or have some kind of value. This is probably the least value of those things, isn't it? Let's be honest, it's just me, really. So um, other things are going on on the website, over on the it's more my blog site, really, at mikeycampling.com. We've got some fiction coming along uh, in a couple of different streams. We've got the um, How to Be Human books, which are written, of course, uh, not by me, but by Raw Geep, the, uh, who is a Globon uh, from the planet Globon, confusingly. The, uh, the name of the, the uh, type of people is the same as their planet, which is kind of uh, confusing, but that's, <laughs> that's what we have now. So, that's, uh, you know our aliens i can't control that so he um he writes a blog on how to be human as far as he understands it each week and um that's coming along there's quite a few of those on the site there's also either flash fiction or serialized fiction coming along so typically they'll probably be fridays um some of them have been in response to flash fiction uh prompts uh, a couple from reed C, I think I think they were both from Reedsy, just ideas that people had. And so they are going up on the site as well. And this week, well, the end of last week, I did something slightly different. I started a serialized bit of fiction, which um, is using some characters for a sort of crime type mystery type uh, story, which I've got going. And I've been working on these characters for a little while. Um, it's kind of my sort of Holmes and Watson um, type idea. So they are coming along and the first part is up. Now they're kind of a work in progress. So if you go to the site and see that, um, mysteries sort of being what they are, already I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go back and, and you know put clues and things in earlier. But I think, hoping people will kind of like to see it as, as they come hot off the presses. So you're kind of seeing a work in development um as it goes i mean it, it's so they're not perfect but i think they're good enough for people to have a look at quick read through and see if they enjoy i was hoping to finish it in a self-contained way but it, it just became too long and too complex and um plus i needed to work out the ending and the complications properly because my original idea sometimes you have an idea and you start to write it and you think ah this isn't going to work um so that's what somebody's appeared and then disappeared again obviously you think somebody rambling oh and they've reappeared again don't know who they are but anyway hello wherever you are <laughs> coming and going um so yeah you know that's how it is when you're writing sometimes it it your idea is good enough and solid enough just to the whole thing it's like you're on rails and it just goes along smoothly other times you read more often than not i think you rethink as you go uh, it's probably why i'm not too big on outlining is that if I put something in there, I'm probably going to go back and change it all anyway. So it's, you know, they don't, they don't help me a great deal, but you know, there we are. So, um, I might even read some of it to you in a minute. Um, see what you think to that. See if you feel like you want to go and read it. Uh, it's, it's a longish little piece. So I don't, I'm not going to promise to read it all today. Um, but yeah, that, that, they will eventually, way down the line, um, they will be published. But the uh, short fiction and the blog posts at the moment, the plan is once a month, I am going to be rolling them together, formatting them into nice ebooks, and they'll be available in all formats via BookFunnel, tied in through Patreon. 
and I I, there's a couple of different support levels and I think so I put like three dollars a month and you'll get you'll get this almost like a magazine it's almost like a, a fiction magazine type format because you're going to get several uh, blog posts from raw Geeb plus which are quite funny I think and then you're going to get the the short fiction um, rolled together and I will go through before I bother doing that I'll I'll um, you know, give them a bit of an edit and a bit of a spruce up and maybe expand them a little bit as well, just to improve them a bit. And so that will be just for Patreon people. Um, everybody can read them, of course. They will be freely available in their first draft form on the blog. But if you want it a bit nicer, because it's kind of nice reading things in an ebook format, then you've got your favorite device, whatever that is, and you can read the book that way. And Book Funnel will make it really, really easy. It's easy to get onto whatever device you have so hopefully that will be that will be something that people want uh i know i've got one patreon subscriber paying at that rate already which is nice you know it's i think it's going to take a while to build up i'm not expecting to make a whole lot of money from it but it kind of helps me if there's a little bit of um financial support coming in then that supports me in providing the content um for everybody and by giving people the ebook i think that's an extra um extra bit of work for me but an extra bit of value for the people who've paid for the privilege of having the, the nicer format so you know they'll be all nicely they'll have a kind of they'll have a reasonable cover on them as well and so they'll look nice and um, way down the line some of those things will perhaps eventually get put into uh books for sale but that's some time off so you'd have to wait quite a while unless you want to you know get them quicker uh, and better, um, well, it's a more immediate, and if it's better, but it's it's different. So I think that's hopefully worthwhile for everybody. So that's kind of what I've been up to. Um, I'm also on the um, the fourth Brent Bolster book, um, which I'm bashing away at, and that's going quite well. I've I've only got working titles for that at the moment, so I can't. I won't tell you what that's called because I'll sort of keep my powder dry and we'll work on that as I go and and produce a nice title for it and they will be um you know in the in the series very much following on from the uh, the serana identity which is the third brent bolster book and uh dial g for gravity is now only 99 cents 99p or 0.99 euros and so on you know it's i've reduced that price because because there's three books in the series so um there will soon be four. I mean, I'm looking at around the end of this month, hopefully, for the end of the first draft. So then there'll be editing and so on, rewriting uh, from me before that comes out. So hopefully somewhere within May, you know, hopefully only a couple of weeks into May at the most. I really want to get that, that as quickly as possible. I would have had it out sooner, but I've been writing this short piece for uh, the anthology sci-fi anthology the expanding universe uh five i want to say yes yeah i had a story in three a story in four and i've got which which uh four is out as an ebook now three is only out as paperback four is expanding universe four is out as paperback and ebook but eventually that ebook won't be available anymore in which case i will then put that story out uh for sale myself because i'll get the rights back so that's all how that works and meanwhile i've got another story pretty much ready to be sent off to Craig Martell, who is the editor of those sci-fi anthology series. And that will be going up as well. So exciting times. There's lots of stuff happening. Um, so far, the stuff I've written over the years, the Brent Bolster books are, I think they're selling more than all the others. So they are the most popular thing. Um, so that's the way it goes. I really love writing them. I, I get a kick out of it. I enjoy the idea of making people laugh. I think that's great fun. It's uh, I find all kinds of things in in daily and modern life that can go into it. You know, little people will say say things, things will happen, and I think, oh yeah, put a bit of a tilt on that, a bit of a slant, and it becomes funny. Because let's face it, most things that most of us do most of the time are faintly ridiculous, and I think that is. I mean, I'm not comparing myself by any means to something like Terry Pratchett where, or say Douglas Adams, 
they were great at using a different genre to sort of point up the uh, point out the, the the silliness the ridiculousness of things that happen in daily life you know corporate things tech things all kinds of different aspects of life um are up for discussion in those by virtue of using a different genre so it's kind of in that vein um and i find that's that's good because that means the materials everywhere it's it's all around and uh i think people are enjoying them because it seems to me that people who from what i can tell i mean you don't really know but from the details that amazon let me have it seems like people are reading the first one and going on to read the second one and going on to read the third one quite soon afterwards so um hopefully that means they're having a giggle and um there's a broad range of humor in there so i think whereas some people might be thinking about them in a you know a more highbrow way and laughing at some of the references to things other people are just you know enjoying the the daftness of them um there's there's i think a reasonable mixture and i quite like that i i like the, the idea is a bit of a range because you know we all we all sometimes like a highbrow joke and a clever joke or a witty joke but other times you know it's somebody falls over and it seems the funniest thing ever you know it's uh <laughs> It, we all kind of have um, our own little bits of different ways of enjoying humour at different times. So uh, it, it's interesting. It's a challenge doing humour in many ways because for it to work, I, I think it's got to work on the page. Uh, and that's what I always loved about Terry, say Terry Pratchett. Again, not you know saying that they're as good as that, but he... Um, his books if you think about it they've not really managed to make the transition to tv or to film um they've done some quite successful radio versions where they've kind of been rewritten as radio dramas um and they they work okay because it's a similar kind of medium in that there's nothing between you you know the listener there's nothing in the way um it's like that you the reader when you're reading something like a terry pratchett you find yourself just having to stop, you're just brought up short by the, the twist in the, the way the words are used. And there's this sudden thing that trips you up, ah, it makes you laugh. Uh, that, that was his sort of genius, really. And um, yeah, I'm trying to make sure that mine work as, as, as re reading experiences, you know, um, because that's, that's where I like to enjoy a lot of stuff. That's where I experience stuff. I'm, like a lot of people, you know, if, if there's a film version or whatever, I'll try and make sure I read the book first, whatever it is, because it's always better, isn't it, pretty much? It's it's very rarely the other way around, you know. If you, the book is, is the primal thing to get to and to enjoy. So um, I don't know if I do much more sort of talking into the ether at the moment because it, I don't think – people are catching on to it i'm doing it at a weird time and i haven't built up a routine of doing it regularly i might have to sort of switch over to say doing it on a weekend or something because um it might be better that sort of my early evening will be say afternoon in the states or something and that might work out better but at the moment i'd kind of settled on monday in my schedule so tomorrow is raw gabe and so on i'm trying to wednesdays oh the photos the featured photos i used to do one um per newsletter that I sent out to my subscribers in the awkward squad. And um, what I'm doing, that was, that was really enough, wasn't it? Which I hadn't done that. And I, um, I'm now putting several, so I'm putting, putting several featured photos together into a blog post, which is kind of easier and nicer. And I can put a bit of a bit of commentary or caption or whatever for each one. And then newsletter people can click through and get them if they want. And blog followers can get them whenever. And, they build up into collections. So, you know, I hope that gives some sort of glimpse into the background of daily life and what's going on um, in this part of the world and places where I've been. Um, okay. If I have a quick look, it means I can't sort of see what is going on here. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, God, I don't know what that's doing there. Some weird thing happening in my um, browser. Okay, so um, 
not a great title. This has kind of is a working title, but I had to put something on the blog post. And this is from a bit of uh, a bit of short fiction. Somebody keeps appearing and disappearing, and I don't know who they are because they're not making a comment, which makes me wonder if anybody can hear me at all. Uh, perhaps they can't. In which case, it's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a negative experience. So if if uh, somebody wants to do a comment, please do to say that they can hear me because that happened before that people were able to comment. Uh, I guess I could have to check next time on a phone or something and see. Okay, <clears throat> quick sip of the old fizzy mineral water. <clears throat> Clear the throat. And I'll just do a quick bit of a reading of that, um, the mystery type thing. As I say, first draft, not perfect at all but we'll just see give it a few minutes and see how it goes so freshly roast mystery part one dan corrigan stopped in the narrow street and took out his phone according to the map he was just a few minutes away from the coffee shop but this wasn't the first time today that it had promised such hopeful news Indeed, at one point, the software had cheerfully announced that he'd reached his destination. But Dan, staring at the storefront sun offer, a tattoo parlour, a hairdresser, and some sort of retro video game emporium, had been inclined to disagree. See Exeter and die, he thought balefully, staring along the cobbled street. Die of thirst, die of boredom, die of confusion. Are you all right there? Dan turned on his heel. The middle-aged woman was studying him with polite concern. She was well-dressed in a long black coat, and her hair, streaked with silver, had been expertly cut in a style that suited her extremely well. For a moment it struck Daniel as very odd that the woman should feel confident in approaching a strange man in a quiet back street, but it was the middle of the afternoon, and Although the street was quiet, the main shopping drag was just a few yards away. Plus, this isn't London, he reminded himself. They do things differently here. He forced a smile. Yes, uh, fine, thank you. Just checking my phone. He waggled the device in the air unnecessarily. You know how it is. Never switched off. Never a moment's peace. Oh, dear. There was sympathy in her pale blue eyes. Only you look a bit lost, and to be honest, if you carry on down here, you'll be heading off the beaten track. I'm on my way to work, but most people don't venture down this way. Right, OK. Dan's grin felt fixed to his lips. Go on, he told himself. Admit that you're lost. Ask for directions. But it was no use. Well, uh, in that case, I'll go back the way I came. The woman didn't say anything. She just watched him as if expecting more. Cheers, Dan said, then he turned and walked away without looking back. The main street was depressing. Yes, there were coffee shops here, but they were the franchises he could find on any street in the Western Hemisphere. And he didn't just want an indifferent mug of brown stuff. He wanted carefully selected, organically grown beans, roasted in some obscure way over a wood fire by a fairly paid Ghanaian, ground to a tolerance of one hundredth of a millimetre and brewed by a barista with theatrical facial hair and a deep knowledge of pressurised baskets. He wanted artisanal. He wanted coffee. And he was damned if he was going to settle for anything less. The painstaking search on his phone had shown him the top ten coffee shops in Exeter and he would try once again to find the place holding the top spot and this time he would succeed. And I'll just leave it there, it's going to seem like a place to cut off. If you want to read the rest of that, if you go to uh, mikeycampling.com and you'll see the latest blog post on the homepage there. And you'll see that one's titled Freshly. It says Free Story, Freshly Roast Mystery Part One. Part Two, come hell or high water. Um, uh, well, actually, <laughs> I suppose it could be unforeseen circumstances involving hell and or high water. But um, barring that, uh, barring disaster, it should be up there on Friday or Saturday. If it takes me a bit long to, to write on, on Friday, uh, that might be that it's not posted till say saturday or sunday or something but should be there soon um whether it will tie up the story in that episode or not i'm not sure it might take a third one 
Uh, I do now know pretty much what is going to happen. It's sort of quite quite intriguing. I hope a bit of a puzzle, a bit of some red herrings and a bit of mis misdirection, all the things you want from a mystery story. But um, it is kind of, I said crime earlier, it's definitely more of a sort of a mystery, more of like a cosy really. Um, and because it's short, this you know this this isn't kind of um well i won't give away too much it's kind of like a cozy little mystery and it's it's launching into these characters because i've already got it's kind of going to be a separate maybe a novella or something or a novelette but i'm working on a full-length novel separately with these characters and they'll they'll meet in the novel so this is going to be like a bonus story um but that's that's why they so it may be written first but it's not going to be the first thing to read necessarily uh, hopefully it should work well on its own though it's not itself going to be part of the series if you see what i mean and the books when they come out uh, should work on their own uh, the idea is they're going to be one-offs but we'll see how it goes um if people are liking this short story and think yeah i like these characters if they if you feel like responding to these characters then that is good and i will know about that hopefully you'll let me know please do put comments on the blog or on facebook or i'm also going to copy this up onto youtube so whether you're watching this or experiencing it comment away so i know and um and till next time i'll probably send off my get out my old uh my old gray fedora and uh talk to you again so until then look after yourselves take care and um Enjoy the spring weather if it's spring where you are. And I'll say goodbye and attempt to end it. There's a button here somewhere. Bye.